All right, nine three practice problems. Let's get after it. Uh, number one, find the missing angles for the rhombus below. So just quick reminder, remember what a rhombus is? A rhombus has four equal sides. So all four sides are equal. Um, it also has opposite angles are equal, just like a parallelogram. And then these opposite angles are different, but they're equal. And then another thing you need to know is consecutive angles are 180 degrees. So that's everything the same as a parallelogram. Now the new feature here is that when you have a diagonal, that diagonal actually bisects the angles on the ends so that you know this angle right here and this angle right here are going to be identical to each other. And they'll also match these two down here. Um, coming the other direction, that black diagonal there just, di just bisected this piece and this piece. So that's kind of the key features we're going to need here uh, for number one. So let's kind of get after it. So if G is 106, the opposite angle E, which is angle 5, that's also 106. Um, now we're going to use the consecutive angles are 180. So 106 from 180 would be 74 degrees. So that's how much angle F is. Uh, so angle D would also be 74 degrees. Now to get 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 separately, we need to bisect it or divide it by 2. So that tells me that angle 1 is going to be 37 degrees and angle 2 is also going to be 37 degrees. Same thing for number 3 and number 4. So I believe we have everybody locked down there um, for, for number 1. Alright, scrolling on down. The next one, which I don't know why the 16 is there, but whatever it just kind of showed up so we have another rhombus uh, so with 72 being marked here the other side of the diagonal is going to be another 72 and that's going to match up top here so we have four 72's um, now another way we can get the angle 5 and angle 1 is we know that triangles have to have to 180 so if I kind of just focus right now on this triangle right here um, I have 72 plus another 72, which is 144. And if I subtract from 180 degrees, it's going to give me 36 degrees. And that's going to be true for G. And it'll also be true for angle 1 there. Um, so correct answers are 72s and 36s. All right, moving right along. Number 2, find the length of the diagonals for a rectangle W, X, Z, Y. W, X, Z, Y. So let's draw a rectangle. And we need to label this thing W, X, Y, and Z. And we know one fact, a property of a rectangle, is that the diagonals are going to be congruent, or they're going to be equal in length. So this diagonal should be the same length as that diagonal. And then they tell us how long they are. They say that wy is 6x minus 7. And then they tell us that xz here, which would be this fellow, that whole thing is going to be 3x plus 2. So what I need to do is I need to set up an algebra equation. So I need to say that 6x minus 7 is going to be equal to 3x plus 2. And now we just got to kind of do some algebra work and we need to solve this. So I'm going to minus that 3x from both sides. And I get 3x minus 7 equals 2. Add 7 to both sides. 3x is 9. Divide, divide. And I get x equals 3. Now, they didn't ask me to find x though. They said find the length. So I actually have to plug that 3 back in. So I'm going to take this 3, and I'm going to plug it back in. Do this in green. And I'm going to plug it back into both pieces. So 6 times 3, take away 7, would be 18 minus 7, or 11. So that's wy. And then 3 times 3 plus 2 is 9 plus 2. So that's 11. And that's going to be xz. Alright, number two. 
So let's keep going. Number three. All right, number three, QRST is a rectangle. The measure of angle PTS, so PTS is right here, 34 degrees, and QS, so that would be this diagonal, is 10. Find the indicated measure. Um, so before we start doing exactly what they asked for, why don't we kind of go in here and put a few things we know. If QS is 10, I know that diagonals get bisected. So that tells me that QP is 5 and PS is 5. And also, since diagonals are equal in a, in a rectangle, um, I know that this is 5 and this is 5. So that's going to wipe out some questions over here. So P to T, or actually R to T, is going to be 10, because that's the whole distance. Q to P is going to be 5. And R to S, uh, well, we don't have R to S right this moment, so that's going to take a little bit of work. Um, Find the indicated measure, so we have QTR and QRT. All right, so a couple other things. In a rectangle, remember that these corners are supposed to be 90 degrees. So if we have the 34, we can do 90 take away 34, which leaves us with 56. So that gives me a 56 degrees right here. Um, and that's going to play the same all the way around because I have isosceles triangles. So if I focus on this triangle right over here, those two sides are 5, so the angles across from them have to match. So you're going to be 56. And to make 90, we're going to have a 34. Then we have another isosceles triangle here at the top. That's 34. And we're going to have a bottom one that matches 34 and 34. And then we also have a couple more 56s to make 90s over here. Um, and then I don't know if they really ask us, but the angles in the middle, we could also find as well, because we know that triangles have to add to 180. So if we kind of focus on this triangle right here, right now we have 56 and 56, which is 112 and subtract that from 180 gives us 68. So I have a 68, um, here in the center. So I have a 68 right there and a 68 right here. And then either using a straight line or playing the 180 game, I can get 112 for these other pieces. So I can get every single angle. I can get every single side. Uh, so let's just answer this question. QTR. So QTR right there is this angle, which is 56 degrees. So we're going to put that in. And then angle QRT, so if I go Q to R to T, QRT, so that represents this angle, so that's 34 degrees. Um, and then finally, we need to knock out how long RS is, which is going to be a bit of a challenge. So let me kind of go in here and erase a little bit of stuff and just kind of come right here, get rid of that. And let me just put a couple angles down here that are important to us. So if we have 34 there and we have 56 up here, RS is basically that side right here. All right. And we the only thing that we know is we know the length of RT is 10. All right. So kind of picture a triangle just off to the side and... and let me give myself a little bit of room down here because we're going to have to bust some trig out for this one. So if I draw this triangle, only putting on there what's important, you know, we're trying to find RS. We know that this is 34 degrees and we know that the hypotenuse is 10. We should be able to use trigonometry. So if I kind of put my guy here, this is my reference angle. This would be the opposite. And this would be the hypotenuse. So from chapter 8, opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So the sine when standing on 34 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And now to solve it, you basically just cross multiply. So I'm going to get x times 1 is x. 10 times the sine of 34 
and I'm gonna have to bust this out in the calculator give me a quick second and when you do that you get roughly 5.5919 so let's just go ahead and call that 5.6 for RS all right moving right along number four shrink this down just a little bit all right classify this quadrilateral so I know it's got four sides well let's put some points on here and try to figure out exactly where it is so J is at negative one so left one up four K is at left three up two so that's J that's K uh, L is at two negative three so there's L and M is at right four down one so kind of looking at this guy right here well kind of looks like a possible rectangle to me maybe a parallelogram I'm definitely not thinking square rhombus because I got a couple short sides a couple long sides well the only way to know for sure let me kind of clean this up a little bit is I need to first find out if the sides are parallel and then I need to find out um, if they're the same length and then another thing I might be helpful is are they 90 degrees you know I'm suspecting this thing could possibly be a rectangle um, I know for sure right now without doing a lot of a lot of work is that from K to J you know basically that's going up two over two so my slope for KJ is 2 over 2 so slope of 1 also the same thing from L to M slope of 1 now if I wanted to find the length of that segment basically I could kind of do a uh, Pythagorean theorem and I could kind of make a little triangle right here and use legs of 2 and 2 so I could say 2 squared plus 2 squared equals KJ squared take square root of both sides and that would be the square root of 8 is KJ so and I can find the decimal for that but we really don't need to so this side is square root of 8 this side is square root of 8 um, but I'm, I'm I already know that those two are the same because they were both up 2 over 2 if I focus on the blue slopes you know the blue slopes are going um, let me see down 1 2 3 4 5 over 1 2 3 4 5 so this one has a 5 5 slope okay and it's negative which isn't that important but if I want the hypotenuse of the length of that it's going to be 5 squared plus 5 squared equals mj squared and if I take the square root of both those sides I get the square root of 50 so this side square root of 50 the bottom looks like it goes 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 so he's also the square root of 50 so right now for sure I have a parallelogram um, the only thing I'm thinking is maybe it's a rectangle how I can prove that it's a rectangle remember to prove 90 degrees on a coordinate grid I have to show that their slopes are opposite reciprocals okay or opposite flips of each other and you know if if one my red lines here they have a slope of 2 over 2 which is positive 1 and my blue lines here they have a slope of negative 5 over 5 which is negative 1 and those are actually opposite reciprocals of each other you know if I get fancy and if I put a 1 underneath both of them I put a 1 underneath you and I put a one underneath you um, they are opposite flips of each other so I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that this shape is for sure a rectangle all right Moving right up we got another one here let's take a peek at him so I have W is at 1 4 uh, X is at 1 8 y is at negative 3 up 9 and z so let me just get these points on here w x y and z is at left 3 up 3 
All right, so what type of shape is this? Well, it's looking to me. It's kind of looking like an isosceles trapezoid. So if I had to guess right now, I'd say isosceles trapezoid. One, I know it's a trapezoid because these two lines are both vertical, so they're parallel to each other. Um, clearly, the other two lines are not parallel because one is going down, one's going up. But if you look at the length of these lines, if I wanted to find the length of WZ, you know, if I want to find the length of this line right here, all I got to do is I got to just do my Pythagorean theorem. And I'm actually going to do this in red. So I have a 1 by 4 triangle. So 1 squared plus 4 squared equals WZ squared. Take the square root of both sides. That would be the square root of 17 is WZ. And if I look up here, it's also a 1 by 4. So no sense in doing the same work. Both of those are the same length. So since XY and WZ are the same length, it is for sure isosceles. And because I had the one set of parallel lines, it is, oop, don't know what I just did there. Kind of new to this software. It is an isosceles trapezoid. I'm trying to get used to this stuff. My handwriting's a little bit shaky writing on a tablet instead of my big board. All right. Number five, find the remaining angles. So let's see what we got here. Looks like we have an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, and we got markings, we got parallel markings, we got congruence tick marks. So to find the remaining angles, well, an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are equal. They're the same. So those are both 82 degrees. And if I look up here in the corners, these two angles going from T to S, these are consecutive angles. So they should add up to 180 degrees. And so if I do 180, take away the 82 on the bottom, that leaves 98 for here and 98 for there. And now I think everything's going to be good. It should add up to 360 for all four of them. And opposite angles, um, well, it isn't a parallelogram, so opposite angles don't have to be equal on this one. Number seven, find the length of the mid-segment. So we have a mid-segment formula that basically the mid-segment is the average of the two bases. So we have a long base, you know, call this base number one, and we have a shorter base, call this base number two. And if we want to find the average of the two bases, basically you add them up and you chop it in half. So we have 76, and where the heck did my, my page go? There we go. Somehow my hand keeps hitting stuff here. So if we average those two bases, we have 76 plus 57, um, all divided by 2. Be careful when you put this in your calculator. You might want to hit equal signs up here or put parentheses to make sure the order of operations is fine. But that's going to be 133 chopped in half, which I believe goes in there 6, 6.5. So 66.5 is MN. All right. Number eight, find the length of AB. So find the length of AB. And so AB is this little bottom base. So a couple different ways you could do it. You could get all fancy, and you could set this up as base number one. And then you could use an algebra formula and say that, you know, the top base plus the bottom base divided by two has to equal the median. All right, and you could solve that algebraically. So I could do that. I could times both sides by two, and I'll get 10 plus base number one, which we're missing is 14 minus 10 from both sides and get B1 equals 4. Or I could just kind of look at this thing and say, hey, wait a minute. You know, if, if I go from 10 down to 7, that means I took away 3. 
So if I take away 3 again, I'm going to end up with 4. And that's going to put 7 as a middle number. And it's also the same answer as I got here. So either way, either way I think you're okay. Number 9, find the measure of angle G. Well, first thing we should probably understand here is that G is a kite. All right. So kite has its own special features that we need to kind of know about. Um, one thing about a kite, I'm going to kind of draw this over here to the side and make it a little bit a little bit bigger. I'm actually going to try this this polygon tool. See how this thing works. So go from here to here to there. Yeah, it's okay. Um, not great, but we'll bear with it. So on a kite, if I do the diagonals, one thing about a kite, actually I don't even like that. I'm going to just get rid of it. Freehand my own. So I'll kind of take my time here and freehand this maybe a little bit better. Maybe. Not much. So there's a kite. Um, the diagonals of a kite big thing is they cross at 90 degrees so all kites have diagonals that cross at 90 um, one diagonal actually bisects the angles and it would be this angle up here and this angle down here gets bisected now they're not the exact same top and bottom but they do bisect and we have four triangles in here that we can play the 180 game so let's kinda see what we got going and I'm going to just kind of try to blow this thing up a little bit. Maybe. Alright. So, drawing in what we have, if I know that kites are always 90 degrees in there, we have 110 at the top, and that, got, that needs to get bisected. So, 110 divided by 2 is going to give me a 55 and a 55 which should open the door for for a couple things here um, actually I'm making this way too hard way too hard so don't need to actually well we'll just keep going that's 55 and then we have 90 here so 55 plus 90 is 145 Subtract that from 180, and we get 35. And so this is 35. And then because of this right angle here, I know that that needs to add up to 90. So subtracting, I get a 55 degrees here, and a 55 degrees there, because it said that this was supposed to be 90 degrees, according to the picture. Um, so then making triangles do what they're supposed to do, these two are both going to be 35. So now I have 55, 35, 90. And measure of angle G, well, angle G is this entire thing. So I need to add up this entire thing, which 35 plus 35 is going to be a grand total of 70 degrees. So final answer for measure of angle G, 70 degrees. All right, number 10. Um, number 10 looks like a problem kind of that we did earlier um, about the median. So remember this number right here, 15, is the median. So let me just kind of generically, we're going to call this base 1. We're going to call this base 2. And remember that base 1 plus base 2 chopped in half should equal the median. Well, let's fill in our values here. Let's fill in what we have. Base 1 is 3x plus 2 plus base 2 is 2x minus 2 all chopped in half should equal the median so all I did was substitute all of our values in here well first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine like terms up here on the top so when I'm kind of focusing up here on this top piece I'm going to combine the 3x and the 2x and I get 5x and then when I combine the plus 2 and the minus 2, they go away. And then I just end up with the 2 on the bottom and the 15. 
Multiply both sides by 2, and you get 5x equals 30. And divide, divide, and you get x equals 6, which is what they wanted, find x. So I know that I'm done on this one. Number 11, let's shrink this down, it's a little bit big. You and a friend are building a kite, you need a stick to place x to w and w to z. So we're wanting to put a stick from x to w and w to z. Uh, how long does each stick need to be? Well, this one's really easy because if this is a kite, consecutive sides are equal. So that should be 18. And the other side should match up here, which is 29. Um, and that's pretty easy because properties of a kite. So not much to do on that one, luckily. Number 12, in a trapezoid. Um, let's kind of draw this out because it's kind of hard to understand. Trapezoid PQRS. PQ is parallel to RS. So have some sort of trapezoid. PQ is parallel to R. S, actually, look, I think I got to put R here um, just because it goes in order. So PQRS flows in order. So I have to kind of flow in order around the shape. Um, MN is the mid segment. So let's draw a mid segment in here of M and N. And if RS is five times the value of PQ, RS is five times the value of PQ. So a um, couple things I could do here. I could make RS be five and make this be one. All right, that would make it five times the value of PQ. I could use 10 and two. Could kind of use whatever I wanted as long as RS was five times larger than the other one. So what is the ratio? So remember ratio is gonna be a fraction or using these little um, colon symbols. The ratio of MN to RS. So first of all, let's figure out, MN is gonna be the average of one and five. So to find out what MN is, we have to go one plus five and chop it in half, which is three. So the ratio of MN to RS would be three to five. Correct answer is A. All right, looks like that completes this lesson. Thanks for bearing with me learning this new software. Um, it's not as easy as standing up at my big board, but this is what we're working with right now. See you.